This is Kristen, also known as MC Router. She's an internationally recognized rapper who's notorious for being promiscuous and chugging a case of beer on stage at every performance. This is Abby. She's a devout Muslim, speaks fluent Arabic, doesn't drink alcohol, abstains from sex, and prays five times a day. Now, it may seem like they have nothing in common, right? Well, they do. Actually, they are the same person. Almost two years ago, Kristen converted to Islam and changed her name to Abby, actually Abida. Her mother, Darlene, says Kristen, who she refuses to call Abby, has not only turned her back on her family with her new Islamic beliefs, but on America as well. She's worried her daughter may turn into a terrorist. Take a look. My daughter has quit speaking to me because I don't accept her religion. I grew up as a Southern Baptist in Texas. I reverted to Islam in 2012. I changed my name to Abida a week after I became Muslim. It means worshiper of God. My mother, she refuses to call me anything but Kristen. When I see Kristen being Muslim, I think about Al-Qaeda, terrorist bombings, Osama bin Laden. I never hear anything positive about them, ever. My mother is very ignorant. She has like no qualms about being racist. I have gay friends, a lot of gay friends. I know they, they have some problems sometimes with gay bashing and everything, but you've never heard of a gay man getting another gay man to strap a bomb to his chest and walk in a mall. I'm Muslim and not all Muslims are terrorists. Kristen's been totally brainwashed by these people. She got rid of her clothes. She only wears the scarf, the long dresses. I choose to wear hijab because it promotes modesty and it's pleasing to Allah. She has taken everything American out of her house and replaced it with Saudi Arabia flags. She goes to the stores that sell the food, the kind of rice and bread and everything to eat. That's all she eats basically now. I love the Saudi coffee so much. Alhamdulillah. I think that they have a hidden agenda for her because of the way things are progressing so quickly. She said they buy me expensive stuff. They have lambs slaughtered for her and bring to her a whole lamb, like chopped up for her to eat. I mean, that's like a ritual to them. I pray a lot that she's going to see what she's doing and step out of it because I've lost my daughter to this religion. Well, Abby says becoming Muslim is a much safer choice than her previous profession. Kristen used to be a pretty famous rapper. I got popular enough doing the MC Router stuff that someone made a Wikipedia for me. I got invited to play shows in Holland and Europe. I did a West Coast tour, played Whiskey A Go Go, where the Doors and Guns N' Roses have performed. I'm gonna destroy every part of my PC. I was really proud of her. I would tell her all the time, Kristen, I think this is what you were meant to do. When I was performing as MC Router, I came very close to being an alcoholic. My stick for my stage performance was that people would bring me beer. My sets would be an hour, and I could knock out 24 beers in the set. People came to see me get drunk. She was never an alcoholic or even near an alcoholic at all. And I wouldn't know because I've been in the medical field for my entire life. I pick up on drugs, um, alcohol. I work for a treatment center and I pick up on it really fast. But she posted a lot of it on the internet, some very provocative things on the internet. On stage, it was very vulgar and R-rated. I would make out with random fans on stage. I would spit beer on people in the front row. I was sleeping with random fans or club owners. And I'm shocked that nothing bad happened to me that could have from that. After I became Muslim, I had to stop drinking. I had to stop having promiscuous sex. I spend my time reading the Quran and praying on a constant basis. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. MC Ryder is the complete opposite of who I am today. I believe that her being a rapper is much, much safer than her being a Muslim. No one's going to attack her or coerce her to do something she doesn't want to do because she's rapping and having a rapper's lifestyle. Now, Darlene hasn't seen her daughter in over a year, uh, so she's coming out now. Hi, Good Sassy. to meet you. Good to meet you. Right here. Sorry. Oh, uh, wow. That is 
is so interesting. You haven't seen your daughter in a year. And I actually stepped way out to greet you so I could get out of the way so you could see your daughter for the first time in a year. And you haven't looked at her yet. I can't. You haven't seen her in a year. This is your child and she's right in front of you. She doesn't look like my daughter. <laughs> really? I mean, it's, 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 it hurts me to see her like this because she looks nothing like my daughter. She's changed a lot. How, how, do you, how do you feel? Did you find that odd? Uh, yeah, it's really strange. But you haven't seen her in a year and she comes out and won't look at you till I make her? I'm the same person <clears throat> inside. It's just I've changed things in my life for the better. So she should be happy. I think any parent would be happy if their kid went from drinking and partying and sleeping around to being a more mature, not drinking, healthier person. What is it that she's doing now that you object to? She's changed her whole life. She sees, she does not see any of her old friends that are, I would say, American. She only hangs out with the Arab community. And you're saying you don't want to be around those people because you're afraid that there's going to be some type of terrorist activity. Well, I think unintentionally. I think unintentionally with her only hanging around with them and they give her a lot of attention. They buy her expensive <clears throat> gifts. It's like they're just like bringing her more and more in. You think they're grooming her into a cult. Exactly. That's exactly what I believe. That's and what you think. She's being, she's being groomed. Yes. Especially with the skills that she has about the computers. She's a very good shooter. Guns. Uh, she speaks three languages. And you say she drives around with an I heart Saudi Arabia sticker on her car and you're afraid somebody's going to like shoot her or, Absolutely. or run off the road. All right, well, here's what she says. She, she says that you have turned your back on America. You've taken down the American flags, now only Saudi Arabia flags. She says that... You, you say Islam is 110% conviction where you need to be in your beliefs. And uh, she's concerned you, you've gone too far. What do you say to her about her fears? She thinks you're going to become a terrorist. I mean, are you, <laughs> no, are you I, looking to be a terrorist? No, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I understand what... Uh, kind of information she gets from about Islam based on the media um, and, and movies and TV shows and things like that. But um, she that's the problem. She won't <clears throat> take time to look at what is really Islam and how peaceful the religion is. You think somebody's going to hurt her or you think she's going to get swept up in some movement and do something terrible? Exactly. That's what I believe well, is going to happen. Both? It's both. <laughs> really. So you, you really equate Muslims with terrorists? Well, I do, and, and I'm, not, I'm not a stupid person. I mean, when I look things up on the Internet, I'm not looking for the bad things I do. I'm just looking at general things, you know? And there's more bad things that I see than there are good things that I see. I think it's a cult. I think they, they bring people into it because she's been given so much attention from these people. All right, well, coming up, is Abby just going through a phase? Darlene says you wouldn't believe some of the other phases her daughter has gone through. Well, let's find out what those are when we come back. When Kristen finds something that she's interested in, she goes in full throttle. She went into the military. She started swing dancing. Then she got interested in Dutch people. She learned Dutch. She speaks Dutch fluently. I think she's lost her identity. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, his wife hit him with the car, but she claims she's the victim. She says you choked her, kidnapped her. Are you saying none of this happened? I'll give you my word. Bizarre behavior. Get off my car. I have to go to work. And accusations. You've had six restraining orders against you. It makes it look like this guy is an abuser. You seem to get real defensive really quick. With a shocking discovery. Melissa went missing this morning. That's tomorrow.
After I finish school in a year, inshallah, I plan to move to Saudi Arabia. The Saudi government requires a lot of uh, medical exams, a lot of legal paperwork, and I've done all of that. I already have all my ducks in a row for any time that I want to go over there. I don't plan or see myself coming back to uh, the States. Well, that was Abby who says she cannot wait to finish school so she can move to Saudi Arabia and never look back. Now, her mother Darlene says she is terrified her daughter may be brainwashed by her new friends and that she prays this new religion is just another one of her many, many phases. Take a look. When Kristen finds something that she's interested in, she goes in full throttle. She got into being goth and then she went into the military. She started swing dancing. Then she became a rapper. Then she got interested in Dutch people. She learned Dutch. She speaks Dutch fluently. She changed her name to Chris, I think it's Chris, it's K-R-I-S-J-E. Her car was covered in, I love Dutch boys. She went to specialty places and bought all Dutch food. When Kristen converted to being a Muslim, I didn't think too much about it because she's gone through so many phases. But my worst fear right now is that this Muslim phase that she's going through is not a phase. Assalamu alaikum. And that she's going to do whatever she has to do to get to Saudi Arabia so she can believe that she's really Muslim. I think she's lost her identity. Okay, so she says that you got into swing dancing. Did you like convert to that? I mean, <laughs> is that what she's saying? I guess. I mean, I don't know if swing dancing is a cult, but. <laughs> and in the military? Yeah. Was that a phase? Uh, it was, but only because uh, I just wasn't fit for military life. That wasn't me. And then music and rapping. Yeah. You just all into that. Yeah. But, but the thing about it is, is that these things aren't really phases. I think they're experiences, and I, I still speak Dutch on a daily basis. I talk with all my Dutch friends. So now <laughs> you want to be Muslim, and you want to move to Saudi Arabia. Before you wanted to be Dutch and move to Amsterdam and only get tulips for flowers. Are you kind of a all-or-none sort of girl? I, I'm all-or-nothing. I mean, whatever it is, I'm all-or-nothing. If you go to Saudi Arabia, you understand that there are different cultural mores and folkways there, right? That women have a different role there. Yeah, I mean, women can't drive, which right. I would love to be chauffeured around. Um, you know, I hate driving. <laughs> there, I mean, there's a lot of less freedom for women, but I don't mind that because people from Saudi Arabia, they come here and they get to have freedom. They get to do whatever they want. But me, I've already done everything, right? I've already went through all these phases or whatever, and now I'm ready to straighten up my life. Well, here, here are the rules for women that we've been able to determine from, <laughs> from research and, and talking to folks. You can't drive. Okay. You can't be alone with an unrelated man who is not a sanctioned relative. Okay. And you don't have any relatives over there, so that means you cannot be in the presence of any men alone. Unless I have like a, a wali or something, like a, someone on my behalf to be mm. my guardian, like an imam or... Uh -huh. Something who can act as my Wally. You can't travel alone without the approval of the male guardian. Yeah. You can't sponsor a non-Saudi husband. Mm -hmm. You can't visit a graveyard. Mm -hmm. You can't attend Friday prayers in a mosque unless there is a women's section. That's to protect the women, though. <laughs> That's why we dress modestly, so men don't look at us in a, in, in a sexual way. So when they tell you you can't go to the mosque and pray, they, it's better for the women to pray at home, actually. What, what is your tattoo on your, on your hand here? It's, it says Geek Life. Geek Life? Yeah. Yeah, what, what does that mean? Like, uh, you know, like gangsters, they get like thug life, you know, because they're thug. Well, I was on tour, and I, I wasn't very thug, so I was like, well, I'm a geek. I, like, do computers and stuff, so I, I don't know. I was stupid. No. That's, really young. So your, she also has a Christian tattoo. What do you think yeah. a Muslim is going to do when they see a Christian tattoo on her? Yeah, will there be problems with uh, that? Sure, or sure. Um, <laughs> the Islamic community in my city, they reject me a lot. Um, I, get, um, I get talked to pretty harshly by Muslims in my community because of my tattoos. The only problem is, is that um, I got them a long time ago, and they're really expensive to remove. And I and I've tried to save money to remove them. I just can't. And um, there's nothing I can do about it. It's really expensive. 
All right, well, we're going to take a break. Is this a legitimate, heartfelt, spiritual conversion, or is Abby rebelling against her family? Should Darlene learn to accept her daughter's new faith? Put yourself in this situation. If you were the mother and this was your daughter, what would your questions be? What would you be thinking? My mother takes my life event, my new religion, like I'm punishing her. My religion has absolutely nothing to do with my mother and doesn't hurt her in any way. But for some reason, she chooses to keep playing the victim. A former Disney worker says she was harassed at work because of her Muslim headscarf. She claims when she wouldn't remove it, she was fired. People in my city do assume that I'm a terrorist just because I'm wearing like all black and a scarf on my head. I go to grocery stores and people are like, hey, go back to your own country. And I'm like, hey man, I was born and raised in Texas. I think the general public is very racist towards Muslims. Well, Abby says since converting from Southern Baptist to Islam, she's experienced racial profiling. Her mother, Darlene, says that's what she gets for wearing her religious garments in public. Her mother also says she is the perfect recruit for any terrorist organization. She says her daughter's smart, fluent in four languages, a sharpshooter with the military training, and easily manipulated. Has anyone tried to influence you in some way to be disruptive to the American way of life or capitalism or? No, I, I don't, I've never even had a conversation about any sort of politics or anything with any of my Muslim or <clears throat> Middle Eastern friends. How do you feel about America? Uh, well, it's a, it's a good place. The education here is really good. I really don't like America that much. I mean, I, I appreciate the freedoms here and stuff, but it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, what about it bothers you? I don't know. I think I'm, I'm like, I like being around like old culture and traditions. And I think America is just kind of a big melting pot and there's not a whole lot of tradition here. There's not a whole lot of culture. I mean, when I was over in Holland, you see old buildings that have been there since God knows when. And, um, the people have like coffee breaks at 10 a.m. every day and everything is just like very tr traditional and if, I don't know I'm just bored here I guess I mean who knows I could I'm not close-minded I could move somewhere and then miss America I mean I don't know I have to experience that well uh, Darlene admits she doesn't know much about the Islam religion so we invited Adina Lekovic the director of policy and programming from the Muslim Public Affairs Council to join us and also joining Adina is a member of our staff, Alden, who was raised in a Muslim home. Uh, Adina, let me start with you. Um, there are huge misconceptions mm -hmm. about Muslims, correct? I think sometimes politics and culture and religion get swirled together and we get a misunderstanding out of things. And I, you know, I'm a mother. I, I can understand where Darlene is coming from and wanting to protect her child and know where her child is coming from. But when we learn about faiths and other cultures, primarily through television screens and film screens, we're going to get a, a, a distorted picture of what, what's actually going on when the truth is that Islam is actually an Abrahamic faith. We, we believe just like Jews and Christians um, in all the same prophets. We believe in God. We believe in the day of judgment. Truly, Islam is about believing in God and doing good in this world towards all people, mm -hmm. not just Muslims, but serving all people. And you are not as covered as she is. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that? Because uh, the hijab or any form of, uh, of covering your hair or your body is a symbol of modesty. And every woman has the right to choose in her own way how she practices that. And in fact, the vast majority of Muslim women in the world don't wear any kind of scarf. Now, Alden, you've been raised by a Muslim family here in the U.S., right? Yeah, I'm first generation here. So my parents left Lebanon in the 80s and raised me here. Yeah. People usually think if you're Islamic, you're anti-American. 
but there's so many Muslim Americans here and we've assimilated into the culture. Like, like she said, not everyone would wear the headscarf and my parents, my mother doesn't, no one in my family does. And if anything, you know, the moral, the moral values they've taught me is that of empathy, that of understanding and that of just seriously just being, putting others before you and kind of not underestimating another person's battle. And that's kind of like the underlying statement there. It's not so much of like aggressiveness or what everyone else tries to, you know, slide it into. All right, just to be clear, people that would equate Muslim and uh, Islam with terrorism would be making a huge mistake and focusing on a micro binny fraction of that population, true? Certainly. The va you know, okay. again, the vast majority of Muslims, 99.9% .9 of Muslims are on the, on the good and straight path who are concerned about getting their, their kids to school on time. There are fringe elements in any group who cast a, a bad shadow on the rest of them. And we have, you know, as a Muslim, I'm against extremists like anybody else, and that goes against my faith. And that's, that's what the vast majority of Muslims are all about. Are you moving to Saudi Arabia? I, I plan to. Uh, I've sent in some applications <clears throat> to some universities over there. Look, you understand she's an adult, right? Yes. So you, you, you can't dictate what she does. Absolutely. You, you can only influence what she does. Have a dialogue with your daughter. She won't. Yes, she will. And when I try to talk to her, I want to learn <clears throat> about, you know, I mean, she doesn't want... That's not true. It is true. That's well, why we're not talking. But <laughs> see, 80% of all questions are statements in disguise. Mm -hmm. And an awful lot of your questions are disguised statements, accusations, allegations, and indictments of her thoughts and decisions. And you need to realize that's not working for you. She's making a decision you don't like, so you've cut off communications with her. Don't do that. That's totally true. She's also cut... It doesn't matter who... Yeah, okay, let's blame her. <laughs> no, not, not Okay, no. let's do that. Let's say she's 100% responsible for it. Okay. Fix it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Open this line of communication. Okay? You'll do that? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. All right, coming up, a woman...